Well, so what I have here is x plus 4y equals 1, and 3x plus 2y equals negative 12. Now, this is a good problem to look at substitution. And when solving this by substitution, all I want to do is I want to look at what variable is going to be the easiest I can isolate, or if it one's already isolated. But I look at this, and I notice that I do not have a variable x or y that's all by itself. right? That's on one side of the equation, all by itself. So what I need to do is I need to isolate then a variable. Now, we can pick any variable we want to isolate. I could solve for this x. I could solve for this y. I could isolate this y, isolate this x. Um, but some of them are going to be easier than others. So when looking at an equation that I want to uh, use substitution, I want to look for the variable that's going to be the easiest. right? Why make things harder than they have to be? So I want to look for the variable that's going to be easiest, easiest to isolate. So what I like to do when I'm telling my students is, Find the variable that, is, that has a coefficient of 1 or negative 1, and that's the variable you want to isolate. Well, this x has a, a coefficient of 3. This one has a coefficient of 2. This variable has a coefficient of 4. And this one has a coefficient of 1. So therefore, that's the variable that I'm going to want to isolate. So to isolate it, what that means, again, is just to solve for that variable to get it all by itself. So to get x by itself, I need to undo what's happening to the variable. It's being added by 4y. So I'm going to subtract 4y on both sides. So I have x equals 1 minus 4y. And a lot of times we like to write the variable in front. So I can write negative 4y plus 1. But you don't have to. This is just a, um, in mathematics, we kind of like to always have the variable in front of our constant. But you don't have to change it at the end. So therefore, what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace x equals negative 4y in for this equation. It's the exact same equation. It's just written with the x now isolated. And the reason why we want to have this x isolated, because now we know the value of our variable x is the expression negative 4y plus 1. So when applying substitution, I can apply this value in for x into our other variable in the other equation. So what that looks like, so now if I rewrite this by substituting in the value of x, for the variable in the other equation, it's going to be 3 times not just x, but now the value of x, which we achieve from our other equation, which is negative 4y plus 1. Plus 2y equals negative 12. And again, the reason why this is so important is because now I created an equation with only one variable. And I can solve for my variable y when I only have that one variable in the equation. So before I do that, though, I need to simplify this a little bit. So I apply distributive property. So I have a negative 12y, uh, negative 12y plus 3 plus 2y equals negative 12. Then I combine my like terms. So therefore, this becomes a negative 10. I combine my two y values. Those are like terms. So it becomes a negative 10y plus 3 equals negative 12. Then I subtract 3 on both sides. And I get a negative 10y equals a negative 15. Well, I divide by negative 10. And I get y equals a, neg or a positive 15 over 10. Now remember, I can simplify this. right? I can simplify this by dividing the top and bottom, the numerator and the denominator, by 5. I can re-substitute this in as 3 halves. So the value of y that makes this e both equations true is going to be 3 halves. Now what I need to do is find the value of x that's going to make this uh, true. And what's nice about using the substitution method is when I spend all this time isolating my variable, if I know now the value of y, to find the value of x, all I need to do is plug it back into this equation. You can plug it into this equation, but you're having a lot more work having to solve for a variable. So when I plug it back into this equation, I have x equals negative 4 times 3 halves plus 1. Now remember, when multiplying a whole number times a fraction, I can make this into a fraction and then just multiply across. So x equals negative 12 divided by 2 plus 1. x equals negative 12 divided by 2 is going to be a negative 6 plus 1. So x equals a negative 5. Therefore, the values that make this system true are x equals negative 5 and y equals 3 halves. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That's how you solve a system using substitution. Thanks.